The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. With so many people living longer, the fear of outliving your money becomes a reality for many of us. Will I be a financial burden? Will I outlive my money? How will I be remembered? My name is Neil Himmelstein, president of Main Street Planning Group. Please contact me by visiting MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. I will introduce you to strategies that will guarantee you will not outlive your money, that can guarantee you will not be a burden on your loved ones. Through a collaborative approach, Approach, we will uncover solutions that offer tax efficient strategies, lifetime income, and legacy planning. Choice, organization, direction, and education. That is the code we stand behind. Contact MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631 647 4694. And listen to me every Friday at 3 p.m. as I host the Main Street Code for Financial Success, right here on 1039 LI News Radio. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein, and I'm here every Friday at 3 o'clock. If you miss an episode, you can always catch me on Spotify or Apple or go to my website, themainstreetcode.com, and see past episodes, and we'll keep you up to date, and we encourage your questions and comments, and hopefully we can help you with your insurance needs. When we talk about our code, we talk about choice, organization, direction, and education. And we help hundreds of advisors across the United States, whether they're insurance advisors, attorneys, CPAs, all refer to us in the areas of life insurance, annuities, disability, and long-term care, where we are experts. We represent 30 different insurance companies. We're completely non-biased in our approach. And we hope to help you. And one of the other features that we do is we help you put your financial team together uh, so that your plan works for you. And today we are very excited to have with us as our honored guest for a return appearance, Mr. Rob Fishman. Say hello, Rob. Hello, Neil. Man, you know, when I hear you do this description of who you are and what you do, you just do it so well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate so that. So proficient. Ah, oh, God. You do it enough times, right? Yeah. Practice makes perfect. It sure does. Thank you. Rob is the CFO or the CEO? Or President. The president of Sandler Training out here in Hot Bog. Mm -hmm. And what is Sandler? What, is, what do you guys do? Great question. Sandler is a uh, sales business development uh, company. So in other words, we organize companies and organizations, large and small, on their sales strategy or go-to-market strategy and when it comes to business development and the skills they need for them to be uh, excellent. So we teach sales at sales training. Uh, we're doing some work with around prospecting, looking for new business. Uh, that's that's the focus of our work. And, and I have to tell you, um, Rob is an invaluable partner to me as far as uh, his mentoring, um, as far as his processes. Uh, we had a situation um, that we're just recovering from called COVID. I don't know if any of you heard of it, right? And when COVID hit, Business, the world changed, of course. Everybody's lives changed. Listen, if you had kids and they were in high school and they weren't getting the socialization, I'm hearing this is such a big issue today. Uh, and businesses as well who rely on contact, on one-on-one -on -one relationships. And I'm going to tell you, Rob and his firm helped me through that because I needed a different approach to reaching people. Hmm. And that's when I started doing the radio show, uh, Rob, if you recall. Sure. And... We started working with Zoom, and Rob's company teaches you how to do those kind of things. And they're also involved in AI and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, today, you know, I really want to talk about something that is lacking or people need to be re-educated about or really taught how to do because they don't teach this in school. And, you know, when people are busy running a business, it's very hard to get out there and see people and... It's called networking. I hate the word networking, to be honest with you, because mm. I think it's more about relationship building. But Rob, I'd love to get your opinions on how to network, what to network, all that kind sure. of stuff. 
Well, you know, coming from you, Neil, you're, you're really good at it. And I think, and I'm, I'm certainly, we, we, we are asked that question, well, was my networking not working, right? So what are some elements? What are some things that are the gaps? I could be more effective in networking if only I could do what? Do more of it, find the right places, be better at my approach to other people, have a better, uh, my talking points about what I do. Is that, that's called a 30 second commercial when you are introduced to somebody. Let's go back to real human dynamic basics. Neil, you know us. What's a person's favorite topic? Uh, their kids, their family. Themselves. Yeah, themselves, right? sure. You ever notice that? There are people that you might meet at a networking event. They, you know, and you start the conversation off. Well, tell me about you, Neil. You know, where you're from, your family, you know, where'd you grow up? Those types of questions, which is all well and good. The, the really poor networkers will stay in their own world because they like to talk about themselves so that turning it back towards the person they're, they're meeting. So I want to give you an acronym because I am I love acronyms. So the acronym I'm going to give you is uh, FORM, right? F-O-R-M. And when we meet somebody for the first time, we can't a second time make a good first impression. So for FORM, F stands for family, right? When you meet somebody for the first time, we can talk about business. We'll get to that. But in terms of family, where are you from, right? Where'd you grow up? Uh, do you have a family? Uh, and now we start to talk. If there's kids, great. If there aren't, okay, there may be pets, you know, anything with, you know, four legs in a, in a family. That's family. And that immediately brings down the wall of defensiveness and now begins to engage somebody in who they are as a human being, not necessarily what their role is. So we'll get there. That's the F. The O is organization or occupation. So, hey, Neil, what do you do, right? Now, that's a time where when we're asked that question, most people do not do a good job there. They cause what we call cognitive dissonance. Like, we're trying to understand. Now, it could be, listen, I'm an insurance or I'm an attorney, you know, or you know, I'm a CPA, whatever profession we're in. But how clearly do we sort of enunciate what we do? So we talk about that essential called a 30-second commercial. It's identifying not just what you do and how you do it, but why people talk to you. And then why would people want to engage? So that's the O, occupation or organization. The next one is my favorite, R. R is recreation. So when you're not working, what do you love to do? And I've met people, and again, I'm a musician, I've met CEOs of companies who are musicians, and it's kumbaya starts at that moment, right? It's like, oh, you're into golf? Where do you play? So that's right. where the bonding really happens. The M is for meet, meaning at the end of the time we're at networking, spending five minutes getting to know each other, does it make sense for us to continue talking? Is there a possibility of a strategic alliance opportunity? Or not that I'm going there, to sell something to somebody, but might there be some interest in what I do for a deeper conversation? So again, family, occupation, recreation, and meet with a question mark. If you follow that rule of thumb with networking, even the folks that are most uncomfortable walking into a room with strangers and shaking hands with people you don't know, it makes it a little bit easier for those that need a process. No, that's, that's great advice. And, you know, some of the flaws I see, some of the things that are turnoffs to me mm -hmm. is I'll go to an event or I'll put on an event and you got people running around handing out cards and seeing how many cards they can collect. That's not networking. What is? What do you call that? That's called... That's... Yeah, that's just not even close to it. And then people don't understand why... This is not a good thing for them. Right. And you wonder, all of a sudden you're getting these emails, right? Because now you gave somebody your card. Now you're being, right. you know, uh, you're on their now emailing campaign. And now you're hearing about all of the stuff that they do. They're, you know, being uh, sold to in, uh, through their marketing, which is all well and good. But I think it really defeats it. Here's another thing. Neil, how many people do you know if they go to a networking event with a goal? What's a goal? Right. And most people don't have one. The goal might be, well, I'm going to collect as many cards. I'm going to meet as many people as I can. I think a goal that's a good one that I recommend to the listeners is if I go to a networking event and I picked two people that I would like to have maybe a further meeting, cup of coffee, or lunch with to deepen a relationship that might be one of a strategic alliance, and let's talk about that for a second, that that is a good goal to set. Two. I'm only looking for two people. Right. 
right? The rest may be, hey, great, nice to see you again. It may be something there, but I'm talking in terms of really having a productive meeting. Pick two people. Neil, in your world, who are great strategic partners, meaning people that don't compete with you, but you would love their mailing list if you could get your hands on it? Meaning that to me is the identification around who might be an identifi- like a strategic partner. Example, real estate broker, real estate lawyer. Right. Mortgage banker. Right. right. Those are examples of strategic partners. They could refer opportunities to each other because they're not competing. Who is it in your world? Well, in my world, uh, quite often it's attorneys mm-hmm. and CPAs and other insurance professionals that need options for uh different products and different case studies and ideas and uh, how to perform. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and you've helped me with that along the way. But, you know, we're we're getting ready to go to commercial break. Okay. And I want to continue on this venue because this is a very interesting topic to me and I'm always learning. And that's what I like to say is that what I love to do is learn from everybody. I, I don't know everything. Rob doesn't know everything. You don't know everything. If I can learn from everybody, that's the that's my goal. That's the magic. Anyhow, you're listening to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. Rob, how can they get a hold of you if they want to reach out to your Easiest company? Easiest way on LinkedIn, under Rob Fishman, or my email is rob.fishman at sandler.com. Fantastic. And we're going to go right to commercial break. This is Neil Himmelstein, and we will be right back. Welcome back to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein, and today my special guest is Rob Fishman, president of Sandler Training. And Rob, before the break, we were talking about networking and and form, F-O-R-M. See, Mm -hmm. I I remember that. That's all good. Yep. And I love it. And one of the things that uh, we didn't touch on, uh, you started to talk about having a goal when you're going to a networking meeting. Yeah, yeah. And... More than that, you know, the first time I met Rob and in many subsequent meetings, he asked a very important question. He asked it for the break. Who do I want to meet? Who are my people? And you know what? That's a big question because if I have to stop and think about it, then I'm not really structured. And you know what? I fine tune that as years go by. I want to be more and more specific and also in your description about what you do. Yeah, Rob, I want to meet anybody I could sell insurance to. That Initially, I would be like, well, well, I'd like to meet that one and that one and that one. And that's the problem with networking events because people go, I'm going to scatter shot and try and meet 100 people. And maybe 10 of them will call me or respond to me. And it just doesn't work that way. You need to be yeah. purposeful and you need to have that goal, as you said, right? Totally agree with you. And here's, here's the next level. When we think about the, the world of medicine, right, the world of medicine, that, you know, 100 years ago, there were generalists, right? These are right. Gen- general medicine, generalists, meaning if you, if you had a problem with an elbow or had a problem with your liver, it's the same doctor that's treating you. And even in the world of business, we find there's a lot of people that live by the words full service, you know, or a right. full service accounting firm, full service law firm, full service telecommunications. And I think that misses the mark nowadays where we need to adapt a specialist mindset. And a specialist mindset is much more targeted and leads to a higher level of higher quality referrals and introductions. Now, if we think about the word referrals, all right, I'm not a huge fan of the word referrals, the word referrals, but I'm a big fan of the word endorsements and introductions. Absolutely. Right? So when we meet somebody, and that question comes up before that you said, Neil, which is like, well, who are you hoping to meet here? Who is a good introduction for you is a great networking question to ask. And I would hope that the listeners bring that in if they're not using it already when they meet somebody. Who are you looking to meet? Because then I could talk about me all day, but I want to talk about you. I want to learn more about you. And that's where the magic happens. It's the ability for us to get out of our own world and ask the other person is back to human dynamics 101. But the targeted approach is the finesse of great networking. If with, with intent and specificity, can I let people know who would be a good introduction for me, as you said before, before the break? It leads to another essential document in networking, which I call the ideal client profile. And it's a great exercise for anybody to go through who's in business development is to be able to create 
part of that 30 second commercial, right? And let me give you an example, right? My 30 second commercial, which would be built into my ideal client profile, I communicate this to other people. If somebody asks me, hey, so Neil asked me the question. So Rob, what do you do? Rob, what do you do? Great question, Neil, I'm glad you asked. Uh, President Sandler, uh, we are a sales training, uh, sales development, uh, and sales leadership coaching and consulting company. Yeah, but I'm an insurance. How are you going to help me? I mean, I don't understand. Well, this is not about me. It's about you, Neil. Well, I, you know, how can you help my business? Oh, good question. Again, you know, Neil, when I sit down in front of a lot of business owners, a lot of them will tell me, they, you, know, you know, Rob, we built a good business. We, we've built incremental success over the years. We find, however, from time to time, we're just not getting in front of enough new opportunities on a regular, consistent basis. As a matter of fact, we're finding that we're not seeing that new revenue come in as much as we would like. In some cases, we're finding the sales cycle itself takes longer than we're hoping for. Uh, and, and again, that might be impacting our new business. And finally, with the age of all the competition that's out there and a lot of our artificial intelligence that's out there, we're finding that maybe there's areas we could be better on our competitive edge and how we sell against our competitors. Look, before going any further, I don't want to make any assumptions. Is that anything relevant there to you? Everything's relevant to me. Okay. So in other words, that's the tool of right. a well-executed, well, 30-second well, right. commercial. I'm telling you in a third-party story about other owners I've spoken to. Now, I could say, well, Neil, you know, I know I can help you, you know? And let me tell you how I can help you. I can help increase your sales by 20%. Now, who do I sound like? A salesman. I sound like a sales guy, right? Instead, if I go in the opposite direction and talk about, you know, here are the, some of the challenges and issues that I hear from others. And then I said, look, I don't want to make any assumptions here. I don't know. Right. right. Is, is any of this relevant? Is it worth a discussion? And you right. said, no, all of them, right? But some might say, well, yeah. Doesn't everybody have these issues? Yeah, of course. So- I wanted to go, get back to the core of the conversation, which is networking. Yes. And now, what you've taken us through in a very short time, and I know you could, we could spend a lot of time on this, is having a goal, being specific about the ask, and now also finding that commonality with people. But even more so, even before you attend, and I know people, they go to 15 different networking groups. I call them honeybees. Mm -hmm. You know, they're smelling the next flower. They're smelling, you know, be purposeful with who you want to meet. Or is that person going to be at the kind of event you're going to? Or are you just randomly going to Chamber of Commerce and this and that? And I I know guys, we know mutual guys that are CPAs and different people that, that are in our sphere of influence or networking group that go, well, I'm going to go to the Chamber of Commerce. Well, well, why? Right. Okay. What is your goal there? Who are you trying to meet at the Chamber of Commerce? Now, I'm not saying Chamber of Commerce is excellent for B2B business. I'm, uh, you know, I I'm not looking to meet necessarily a B2B business, but it could be an excellent venue for people. In your name. But it also, for specific areas, it could not be. So my point is be purposeful with who you want to go to. Okay. And the right, listen, any networking event you go to is time. So you said something really interesting. I want to back up a second. Let's go to the 38,000 foot view of what networking is. Networking is creating long lasting relationships for mutual gain. Love it. That's the definition of networking. The honeybees, I love that, by the way. A honeybee who's flying from group to group to group to group to group to group to group is not going to have as much success. Right. Those who even focus on one or maybe two groups, but mostly one of well, you know, well-rounded, deep relationships created, long-lasting relationships, like you and I have that now, having known each other for several years now, where... We don't hesitate to refer business to each other or make introductions for each other because there's a level of trust. There's five levels that need to accomplish in order for us to feel comfortable enough to be able to introduce to other people and have that level of integrity. But again, it goes back to the definition of great networking is creating long lasting relationships, meaning we've got to be the go giver. If I meet you, my, I'm thinking, what can I do to help Neil? What can I do to help you? What are you looking to accomplish? That's how we build that emotional capital. That's how we build relationships. If we're giving first, without any expectations in return, I can tell you something, it does find its way back. 
to it. Uh, amen to that. And uh, as you know, I'm a giver. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> um, I know that. And, you know, my challenge was in this business is, uh, especially since COVID and actually before COVID, I wanted to meet a lot of accountants. But I didn't want to, you know, and there's a lot of people in the insurance business that want to meet accountants. Why? Because they hold a lot of your data and, and what you want to do. But the problem was I'm not running around to accountants and buying them coffee and buying them donuts. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried to set myself up, and I have, I, th- I think somewhat successfully, as being a resource for the accountants to come when, it, when mm-hmm. it's their insurance needs. As opposed to running after them as sphere of influence, I've tried to reverse that trend of saying, hey, I'm the sphere of influence. Yeah. You might want to come to. Yeah. But, but I found that a lot of accountants that I've met through the years, mm-hmm. they want to do a tit for tat. Oh, you give me one, I give yeah, you one. That just doesn't work. That doesn't work. No. And, work. and what I tell them is, I can give you other relationships that you may be interested. Mm-hmm. I not necessarily can turn over clients to you, mm-hmm. and and I think that expectation is a problem that I had in in working with them. So yeah, but look at you now. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> look at you now, <laughs> Herr President. Anyhow, you're listening to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. We're here every Friday at three. If you need to reach out to me, and I hope that you do. any of your insurance questions whatsoever. I'm here to help you. And Rob Fishman, how can they reach you? Sure. Uh, LinkedIn is the best way or uh, rob.fishman at sandler.com. That's F-I-S-H-M-A-N. Neil, thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors.